to their journey. So let's hear it from you. Hi everyone. Hi again. So like I know you guys are sleepy. It's been a long day, right? So like another like I I know I don't need to introduce myself like because you guys were here in the morning and you don't remember it. <laughs> So I'm Vivian Rastogi. So, uh, I'm a senior application engineer at Clock, and uh, this presentation is going to be an experience talk as to why Flock chose Vue for uh, for a lot of apps that we've, we've built. So to explain the problem statement, I, I'll need you to I'll need to introduce Flock to you. Uh, Flock is a platform for uh, communication between teams within teams. So the aim that Flock has is to uh, make the communication between you and your team better. And uh, so basically, it's a productivity suite. It uh, enables you to be more productive. Uh, for example, if you have uh, if you have a Jira integration, if someone created a Jira that has been assigned to you, then you don't need to go outside of Flock to uh, mark that Jira as done or uh, maybe change the state of that Jira to clean, right? So, so that's what Flock is. It helps you be more productive without leaving, uh, without making uh, more, uh, without more screens on on the, your uh, cognitive load. So, uh, the problem statement is that uh, we ha have multiple applications that help you be more productive, right? So, and uh, there were because there are multiple uh, productivity is not a single application problem it's a multiple application problem you've got to do you've got jira you've got gitlab you've got github and you've got trello and so on so many tools right so many tools that uh, help you with productivity so all of those tools how do they interact with flock that is through app integrations and uh, because there are multiple app inter integrations which means that there are multiple applications and uh, initially for these applications there was no defined framework that we'd use uh, we basically go with any framework that we wanted like uh, chirag was working with me in flog and he even used functional programming once for a project and uh, uh, we also used vanilla js we also used react to solve this problem and then we have also used view so the choices of framework were all over the place, and uh, they varied from Backbone JS to like everything, to, to Vanilla JS. So and these apps are supposed to be a part of Flock, okay? And uh, even though they were being built and maintained separately, uh, they it, we did not we had to make sure that it, it did not feel any different. The user did not find that uh, the look and feel of this application is different. So, uh, so that is why, like, uh, we needed to make sure that uh, the whole look and feel uh, integrated into the whole flock experience. So, this is an example of a of a channel, and there's a to do list with that channel. So, uh, this is a to do app integration which enables you to assign any task that you create a to do that you create to any channel member that you have. So a channel is nothing but a group like uh, a group like feature in which you can add multiple people and you can discuss uh, any projects related stuff you have on. You could even like add files. You could even uh, like share those files with each other. And uh, uh, so right now here we have the use case of a to do app, and uh, like you you might not need Jira for like maybe if, if it's a small project if, if there are like three developers and uh, you might not need you might not even need jira because jira involves a lot of uh, workflows and uh, you'd need to configure those uh, onto jira right so so instead why don't you just use that to do app directly so uh, that so that's how the to do app gets things done like if you so basically uh, the to do app solves uh, this particular use case very easily without you having to switch contexts But the uh, extra challenges that we faced were that uh, with other frameworks like vanilla JS, Backbone JS, uh, maintainability was becoming a problem. Uh, like a problem in the sense that uh, we had 
uh, you like whenever we have suppose let's say we have three applications and uh, in a day we work to fix three bugs in each of those applications so it required a lot of context switching at that point i mean uh, first you have to think okay let's me let me think this in terms of backend then let me think in terms of vanilla js and then let me think in terms of another framework so that was becoming a problem for us and we decided that we want to like uh, you know uh, standardize so maintainability and extensibility was a problem uh, the fact that we had a small team at that time uh, we uh, and we were definitely growing at that point in time and we needed speed and uh, because of these like multiple different frameworks we we knew that the build process would uh, was actually very like different for all of them so that is why like we tried out some existing frameworks at that point uh, like i said like we we'd already used backbone uh, and backbone has been around for a long time like i last i worked on backbone was in 2015 and uh, like before last year and uh, i like because i had been working on like other frameworks for that long and uh, i had to go back to the documentation a lot like i had to read up on the documentation a lot and uh, like in my opinion uh, backbone uh, required more code like uh, if you wanted to add a plugin or a base code and then extend it then fine but uh, backbone definitely requires more code and backbone the problem with backbone was that it could easily lead to spaghetti code like if your code wasn't organized properly like properly then you you would end up with a lot of spaghetti code then there was react so we also tried out react uh, i'd already worked on react a lot uh, i mean i know it looks looked easy at that point in time like starting with react is always easy but there are always a lot of gotchas with when it comes to react like uh, you never know what like uh, what kind of gotchas you might end up with uh, depending on your use case and uh, like uh, the for example uh, let's take the example of a life cycle method uh, at that time we had the component life cycle method called component will mount so like do you make an api call in call component in mount do you set state in component in did mount or not or, or like where do you do all of that stuff right so that was uh, a little bit unclear and basically there was a learning curve involved with react and uh, like it did like even though the documentation was good but a lot of free resources were not available at that point in time like if i wanted to look up video tutorials i might get the basic ones but not like really good advanced ones so uh, i needed to spend a lot of time on the documentation and for the same thing to be done as compared to view i felt that it required a lot of more code but react had community support and really good documentation so so that's my take away from react and uh, another another issue i faced with react was that like you have this uh, this funda called component and pure component and uh, the life cycle method the the method called should component update so you get to decide what you want when you want to render and uh, to me that was just a cognitive overload like why do i want to decide what needs to be rendered so what we needed was at that point in time a unified framework for our new apps basically uh, if we're building new apps we wanted that it should be in this particular framework and a framework that accommodates a growing team when i say a growing team uh, i mean that like this framework should be such that you could learn it in very like in, in the least possible time and it has less gotchas so basically you would want to do more with less code and uh, we also wanted that it it should have a uh, good community support it should have good a good number of stack overflow and github issues uh, a good number of uh, like a really good documentation as well and uh, a framework basically with growing support and uh, we also wanted uh, 
so support for like project generator generators uh, a cli kind of a thing uh, to bootstrap any kind of project if i wanted service worker uh, to be included into my project i shouldn't have to like hard code it into the whole thing it should just be there out of the box if i wanted state management i i would i wouldn't have to like go and go read the documentation and then add it via code so uh, similarly for eslint and babel integrations i wanted to have like from the get go so uh, so yeah so uh, all of these things could come in with a good cli bootstrap project and that was the requirement of uh, of a framework from like that was a requirement from us to that framework so uh, that is when we tried out uh, vuejs uh, there were just three of us and all of us we tried out vuejs which was like i know like you had been around for a long time but it was the time when vue was gaining really like a good community support so so as with all new things there was some resistance resistance to adoption and uh, like trials as well so there were some concerns like uh, was there enough community support were, were there enough people doing view were there enough questions on stack overflow that were like answered the right way and uh, what about the performance optimizations like uh, would be is it performant is it does it have a good bundle size does it have a lesser bundle size and does it do dom diffing so and so on but uh, to like uh, again view cli2 uh, which was there at the time it was a game changer for like for us we realized its power and uh, how it made starting up of new projects because we were building multiple apps it was important that uh, we build those apps uh, like uh, and we have a good configuration from the get go so view cli we realized that it made bootstrapping and uh, deploying a breeze so uh, some comparison that we made with uh, like uh, view and react because those were the two finalists that we had uh, for example if you wanted something reactive in view so it was as simple as like assigning it inside an object in data and then doing a this dot change that values value okay so that is how you achieve the reactivity in view and you could see that on the ui directly uh, but with the react you have to do something like this so basically a lot of code was like being written uh, to achieve the same thing uh, similarly like uh, uh, one thing i that really blew my mind away about view was the computed properties and if you already i'm sure most of you must have used it already and computed properties uh, like it makes things so much easy uh, and uh, what it does is it listens it subscribes to the value of uh, let's say like greeting and name so it subscribes to the value of both these both these uh, well th both these changes and uh, if anything changes the whole component will re render the the component will re render and the same thing emulated with view oh, sorry with react uh, you'd need to basically create a helper method inside your render and then like do the same thing so what we found was that like view really fit the bill, bill for us like some we features we loved about view were that uh, it had inbuilt dom performance optimizations uh, like the vdom and uh, also performance optimizations like we, we didn't have to worry about component or pure component so i i'm sure like you must have already heard that in in the second talk third talk here and there were computed properties like which completely sold us uh, there uh, the reactivity syntax it makes things so much easy uh, you get to do more with less code you you are more pro productive and so these are the some of the uh, apps that we built using view and uh, the video conference app the google calendar integration uh, red by is when uh, you want to see who read your messages uh, files app search app the polls app uh, mailing list and reminders so in conclusion flock loves you 
and we'd love to build more apps with you if if there are any more apps for us Any questions for me, guys, folks? So, uh, why didn't you choose something really crazy like uh, Svelte or maybe? Um, to be honest, uh, in 2017, I'm not sure Svelte was even a thing. Like it, it was there, <laughs> but yeah, yes, not really. Okay. <laughs> okay. So it like since 2017, it's been view for apps for like, I mean, people have come and go and flop, but like I've been there, so. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> view is all the way. 